First off, this is not really a review because, well, it just isn't and you'll see why. But I was having a bit of a think about some of the interesting aspects of Prusament. And one of those interesting aspects was tolerance. Is plus or minus 0.02 millimeters really necessary? I mean, it seems like a very small change of a very small number. So how much impact is that realistically going to have on the print? Well, let's take a closer look at that, shall we? Hello everyone, my name's Adam and welcome back to the channel. As you may be aware, Prusa Research have recently started selling filament. Well, Prusament, to be more precise. You know, it's like Prusa and filament kind of put together into one word. Yep, the naming scheme is that good. Anyway, there are a lot of filament companies already out there that sell filament, and plenty of them are well known for their high quality and consistency. However, Prusa Research have come along and decided that that's just not good enough. For high quality filament, you need plus or minus 0.02 millimeters of tolerance. So, does that really matter? Well, tolerance is a big deal. It determines your ability to minimize variation from one moment to the next. I might do a separate video on tolerance because it's quite a detailed topic and there seems to be quite a lot of misunderstanding out there, but tolerance is important as a general aspect. A good tolerance is definitely worth it. The issue is how do we define good? Is it plus or minus 0.05 or is it plus or minus 0.02? I think the only way to do that is to have a look physically at how that changes the filament and what variations that would result in a print, assuming that everything else is perfect. So let's have a little bit of a drawing and a little bit of the maths and we'll see how it all comes together. Let's start with some filament. Let's say a cross-sectional area filament. So this is your filament, this is the cross-sectional view, and this is the diameter. The diameter is 1.75 millimeters plus or minus 0.05 millimeters. And that's your general tolerance for most manufacturers out there. So what effect does that have? Well, it means that the actual diameter that you're going to get will be somewhere from 1.7 millimeters all the way to 1.8 millimeters. So at any point along your filament, the diameter could be anything from 1.7 millimeters to 1.8 millimeters. Now, in order to evaluate how much the area changes, we need to calculate the area for this and the area for this. So let's find out how we do that. The area in general is pi times the radius squared, or we've got diameter, so it's d over two squared. And we wanna do a2 divided by a1, so the larger area divided by the smaller area, and that will give us a ratio. So a2 is pi, times 1.8 divided by two, so that's 0.9 squared. And A1 is pi times 1.7 divided by two is 0.85 squared. Therefore, A2 over A1, we can cancel out pi, and we get 0.9 squared over 0.85 squared, which is 0.81 divided by 0.7225. Therefore, A2 over A1, the ratio of the areas is 1.12. 1, 8, etc, etc, etc. Well, actually that should be 1.19 because it's 0.88. Anyway, for us, we're just gonna focus on these three figures here. So 1.12, that means A2 is basically 112% of A1. So it's 12% larger at A2 than it is at A1. So this area is 12% more filament than this area. 12% is quite a big change in the amount of filament. I wonder how that looks on a physical print. Well, let's have a rough estimate. So let's say we've got a layer height of 0.1 millimeters and a layer width, argument's sake, about the same as a nozzle, and let's say 0.4 millimeters, which means the plastic that's gonna be coming out of it is approximately shaped like that, and that's gonna be 0.4 millimeters, and that's gonna be 0.1 millimeters. And your nozzle is gonna be kind of somewhere in here, this and all the filaments coming out like this, laying into this little cube here. Cube, cuboid, anyway, it's a kind of, volume of filament that's being laid down. This is your standard area, this is nominal. This was what you'd get if you had 1.75 millimeters of filament, that's what you get. But we're saying we've got 12% more filament than we would actually want. Now given that the nozzle is a kind of a fixed surface, as is the surface that you're printing on, the filament's not gonna really change thickness at this point of printing. What it will do is squeeze out the edge a bit like this and squeeze out the edge a bit like this. So the question is how much is that squeezing out? Well, is this 0.4 that's changing? this 0.4 is gonna change by about 12%. So 
So 0.4 millimeters times 12%, which is 0.12, gives us 0.048752. I actually use this number here. Anyway, this is the amount that it's changing by. So that is maybe 49 microns. For scale, this would be 100 microns. So your variation then in filament width is changing by half your layer height, nearly. It's very close. That's quite a lot of change. So we know now that for this general high quality filament, we're getting a change of about 49 microns or about half the layer height. So what about Prusament then? How, how much better is that? Does it make a significant difference? Well, let's say again for 1.75 millimeter filament, we've got a tolerance of plus or minus 0.02 now. So this Prusa 1 is going to be 1.73. So 1.75 minus 0.02. And the diameter of Prusa 2, so the larger one, it's going to be 1.75 plus 0.02, which is going to be 1.77. So again, we do the areas, A2 over A1. We know that the pi's cancel out, so we don't need to put those in. Got 0.885 squared over 0.86 squared. And that gives you 1.047. So that's equivalent to this. And this is then 100, well, 1.104.7%. So your change is 4.7%. That's quite a big reduction from 12% to 4.7%. I wonder how that looks when we took at the actual layer height like this. So again, let's use the layer of 0.4 width. And let's say this is 4.7%. So times by 0.047. And that gives you a layer change of 0.0188. That is a lot smaller than that. So what's that in microns? Well, that's about 19 microns. That's quite a significant difference, I think, in the visibility of those deviations. Just one more point for reference. This was for 0.02. Bear in mind that my box of filament actually says it's plus or minus 0.015. So it'll be three quarters of that. So for, 0 point, for a tolerance of 0.015 millimeters, what we'd actually get is 14 microns. This is ridiculous. This is very, very good. I mean, if you compare what I'm getting now to what I'd get on a previous high quality filament, it's, it's what, somewhere in the region of a third, 14 divided by 49 even, 0.28, 28% of the original. Verging on a quarter of the thickness, or quarter of the deviation, this is quite a big difference. Apologies for the slightly scruffy kind of paperwork calculation here, but I think it goes to show that there's quite a big difference in the 12% you originally get down to the 4.7% you get with Prusament and then down even smaller than that from 19 microns to 14 microns of variation. Of course, this is all theoretical and there are a huge number of variables when 3D printing, but if you can minimize just one of those, then you will improve your print quality. So if I can change my filament tolerance from 12% to 4.6% for a very small change in cost, then I'm gonna do that. In case you didn't know, not only is the general tolerance good, but there's also lots of information about your specific spool. For example, the side of the box shows the QR code, a graph of your tolerance, and even the actual tolerance of this specific spool. Not like generally black spools or generally white or this group of spools or that batch, but this actual spool has this specific tolerance. So the one that I have here is plus or minus 0.015. That's even better than the 0.02 that's promised. If you follow the QR code, you'll get through to the website, which not only has information to be able to buy more, of course, but it also has information about the, again, more about the tolerance, the ovality, the standard deviation, and all this very interesting information about the quality of your filament. There's also additional tools there for calculating length left, kind of length remaining, which is the same as the length left, and all that fun stuff like that. Anyway, that's a little bit beside the point. So all in all, is Prusament's plus or minus 0.02 millimeters of tolerance really worth it? I'm gonna go with a solid yes. In the interest of full disclosure, Prusa Research did provide me with this spool of Galaxy Black PLA while I was at TCT this year, but they didn't ask me to say anything, pay me to say anything, and all opinions expressed are of course my own. So that's it for today on Prusament tolerance. I actually think this is kind of quite exciting as a general development within the filament industry as it seems to be a bit stagnant apart from like new materials. So it's good to see this kind of change. Anyway, like and subscribe if you want to see more from me. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for some behind the scenes and stuff like that. 
Join me on Patreon if you want to support the channel and have some other great benefits. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next drop.